Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. So I hope you've seen my all playing, no talking demonstration of the new Korg Triton VST. Well, today I thought we'd dig into it in more detail. I'll give you a walkthrough of the plugin. We'll talk about the architecture, how you edit some of the sounds, some of the features, and of course, I'll play you many of the wonderful programs and combis. So let's get started. This then is what you are greeted to when you fire up the plugin for the very first time. It goes something like this. Nice. We've got an arpeggiated pattern going on there. If you do want to uh, latch those arpeggios so they keep playing, okay. There's a setting I wasn't aware of you have to fiddle with. Go into the global settings here and turn the latch on. A little top tip there. You can also, if you want to, adjust the screen size, which is really nice to see for VSTs these days when we have different high resolution monitors. I've got it on large now and it's filling up the screen. And I really like that. So let's take a listen to a few more programs. If we just step through here, here's the acoustic piano. I don't expect your multi velocity sampled pianos here. Remember, this is 2000 technology, the year 2000, the late 1990s. be quite nice in a mix actually work quite well or when layered together with other sounds in a combi yes so let's talk about the two different program modes or the two different sound modes of the trite and then we have program mode which is a single sound comprised of two oscillators and then we have combi mode here which is where you can layer together and do your splits of up to eight programs to get these massive iconic Korg sounds let's play a few of those for you right now shall we Let's go into the browser here. Let's go to the motion combi. Are we in combi mode yet? Browse. Let's take a few of these and you'll get a few ideas of the kind of sounds that this Triton has to offer. Really nice. I'm happy we can step through the presets with the cursor keys. Super important when you have thousands of sounds to audition, which is the case on this one. And this for me is what Korg does best. They have done ever since the M1. These layered, breathy, motion, evolving pads. Nobody does them better than Korg. And they certainly sound wonderful on the Triton here. In fact, I think I've figured out the formula for the Korg epic pad sounds. You take a breathy choir kind of sound, some strings, have some filter sweeps going on in the background, and then some percussive elements that come in and out, and a curious little percussive sound as well, a little sound effect that comes in later on in the sound. See what I mean? Let's try some more. <laughs> but there's certainly a huge amount of fun to play. We are getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to the program mode and explore the architecture of this particular synthesizer. So I'm going to choose, uh, let's go to the browser again, click browser here. We've got a very nice category browser here as well, where we can search. Actually, let me explain what we have here then. So we have all of the factory banks from the preset 
from the Triton, mixing up presets and Triton from the Triton. 128 in every bank, a nice variation of different sounds. Then we have a expansion pack, so also on board. Um, where do we see those? Okay, they come up here in a variety of different categories. Drum kits, grooves, all sorts. Vintage stuff. Really good. We got orchestral as well. These are the expansion packs. I think they were physical boards that you had to install in the Triton. Cost quite a bunch of pretty money when they were launched, I can tell you. This one includes bunch of pretty money when they were launched. What on earth am I talking about? Stop saying rubbish, Woody. We have, um, yeah, quite a lot of them on board here. Each one has 128 different sounds and I think different waveforms as well. Trance attack, whoa. Oh. Variety of different drum kits, grooves, synth sounds. This thing has it all. The category browser here then as well. Let's go to the slow synth. We don't have a pad category, interestingly enough, but we have this slow synth and fast synth. That's a bit peculiar. That's really nice. I've mapped these four knobs to my controller here, or at least three of them. The mapping for the last one disappeared, and unfortunately, there's no MIDI learn. You have to go into the global settings and assign the CCs for each of the knobs, the controllers, the aftertouch, and so on, which is a bit of a pain. Perhaps in the future, we could have proper MIDI learn. Let's go back to the program mode. I have mapped these knobs. You can see I'm turning the knobs on the A49 here adjusting those. I've also mapped up knobs to control the the uh, lovely pitch strip or what would you call it the pressure pad touch strip thing that you got on the original Triton and the joystick I can move up and down with that knob or sort of downwards and then up with this one. But uh, this is actually one of the advantages of the original hardware. It had a lovely interface to try it on. You had these four knobs, assignable sliders, aftertouch as well, which I don't have, which, in which introduced some really lovely effects and dynamics and expression to the sound. Got the touch strip, the mod pitch joystick here, and buttons which, which, which would change the sound in really interesting ways. You can hear how we've got something completely different just by changing some of these knobs. Unfortunately, you never quite know what you're going to get because you don't know, don't know what these are assigned to. These are like macro knobs that can control any of the synth parameters, but they're not labeled, so it's a bit of a lucky dip. Sometimes you just break the sound, but quite often you get some quite magical moments. <laughs> this is pretty nice. Let me reset this by going up and down. Let's talk about the architecture of the synthesizer. So in the program mode, we have two oscillators. And this is the easy page, although it could be a bit easier. I would have liked to have seen all the oscillator settings, all, all the easy settings on one page without having to tab between the two oscillators, but it's still quite nice. So here's where you choose your waveform. This is a sample plus synthesis kind of architecture, which Korg have had since the M1, still on their current range of synthesizers. Um, but works really, really nicely. So there's no VA, virtual analog or anything here. All of the synthesizer waveforms are sampled actually from some of their uh, nice analog synths. So you get quite a lot of variety there. And this high and low is so you can have velocity splits on the one oscillator between two different waveforms if you want to have a more realistic piano or electric piano. Oscillator 2. Let's adjust the levels here. This is where you need to switch between the tabs, turn everything off, and then you can hear what this is like. That's oscillator one, here's oscillator two.
is the filter. Let's, let's have a listen on the other uh, oscillator. So the filter is very refreshing because it's so simple and it does sound very, very nice. You have the choice of two filter types, a low pass or yep, a low pass filter with a resonance. Or if you sacrifice the resonance, you can have low pass filter and a high pass filter at the same time. You get some nice band pass and notch kind of filter effects. But no controls whatsoever over the steepness of the curves of the filter or any of that kind of stuff. I don't really care, it sounds nice anyway to me. There's your filter envelope, there's your amp envelope, which you can do for oscillator 1, oscillator 2 independently, your multi effects, master EQ, arpeggiator on and off as well. You have one arpeggio available to you. Uh, in this mode. Let's step through some more presets. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> very uh, craft work, very craft work. I like. Fresh breath. This is one of your archetypal, iconic Korg synth pads. No one does it better than Korg for this kind of thing. strip mapped to this knob. Wow, great for your soundtracks there for documentaries or perhaps some meditation, new age composition. <laughs> I really love it. So that, in a nutshell, is your program mode. If we go back to the category browser, you see we've got the bases covered here. Nice organs. <laughs> we've got electric pianos here somewhere in the keyboard category, I suppose. I mean, they're not very advanced. There's only two velocity layers. But they sound really fat and warm. This is a thing that strikes me about this plugin generally. A huge amount of bass, really deep sounds and a very, very warm, thick and rich sound. Which is why it was so popular back in the day. Got some nice scratch effects on that one. 90s piano. Let's go back to the organs actually, see if we can find, yeah, there we go, M1. Let's see if I can remember. I'm not sure if I do. There we go. One more time. I mean, the M1 organ was used in so many house music hits of the time. It's nice to see it carried over here as well. Jazz organ. Full draw bars. These are a lot of fun to play, the organs. I've got no complaints about those. They're not Nord. Electro-realistic, of course, but they do have really nice effects and a lot of girth, grind, and grit. Which we like. Bells, mallets. Monkey bells. ambience. Detuned it, let's see what the buttons do. I usually give you a variation on the sound. 
And I'm nice, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm really happy you can go through the presets. Using the cursor keys, when we have thousands of sounds on board like we do here, you need a quick way to audition them. Digital bells. Really great effects on this as well. I'm noticing um, what are the categories? Uh, vocal, I mean, this is where the Korg have shined ever since the M1. for hours with these sounds. Just picking stuff at random. Brass. Very nice. Woodwinds. Pretty lame by today's standards, but they're there if you need them. Bases. One thing I've noticed. Wow, listen to that. One thing I've noticed: the bases have some real girth to them. Not often you use girth in a video, but I'm happy every time I can. Acoustic bass. <laughs> Sorry. There's a bass enhancer or something on this. <laughs> Gnarly! So really impressed with the bass sounds. Wow. Superb! Yeah, as you can see, just in that category alone, hundreds and hundreds of programs! Slow synth. So this is where you're going to find your pads. Mellow movie pad. Degrees fast synth. Cool, very, very Howard Jones. I like it. Fantasia. Who would have thunk it? Echo Bell, that's a rolling sound as well. That's just wonderful. I mean, you could spend hours of enjoyment on these lead synth. We all have, what are the categories? We have this one. Motion synth, interesting. Glass box. Yeah, I hope you're getting the idea. There is a wealth of sounds on board. What else? Hits. Sound effects, here we go. Yeah, you are. Ooh. Yeah, so wanna tell <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Almost asleep. Let's go to the end of the category, get some weird stuff. It's always fun. Seashore. Applause. Ah, oh, this is your general MIDI sound effects. Let's not go there. So we have um, some grooves.
cool stuff. Finally our drums. And you'll see when we come to the combis in a second that a lot of these have really cool drum patterns that you can jam along with, which is a lot of fun. So let's switch to the combi mode now. So combi mode is where we can layer up many different presets together. Let's choose one. You've heard some examples. Warm and horny. Excuse me, Korg. <laughs> Let's go to bank. Let's go through one of the factory banks here. See what we got. <laughs> Good stuff. Some of these have rhythms. Let's see if we can find a rhythmic one. Did I already tell you about how to create a typical Korg pad sound, the sound design elements? A nice pad plus some rhythmic elements and some weird sound effects. I'm not sure what I've told you and what I haven't told you because I've had to record this demonstration twice. The first one, I just captured the MIDI notes that were coming from the A49 instead of capturing, as I hope we're still doing here now, yes, instead of capturing the output of the plugin. So do excuse me if I repeat myself or forget to stay stuff because this is the second time around. I hate having to record everything twice but I do get to enjoy the sounds and we get a new random selection of sounds every time. Glacier pad. Very nice. You can see on the left the elements or the, the programs that make up this combi. I can mute them all as well, like so. And let's listen to them, listen to them one at a time. Whoops, if we make sure that was off. So this is your whooshy sound that comes in a little bit later. Here's the bell kind of sound with interesting harmonics. Here's the main... Oh, I mean, how warm is that on a scale? So impressed with the way this sounds. Let's take a listen to this. And we got a little rhythmic pattern as well. Let's combine two of these. the other elements that we've muted. There we go. Almost a tears in my eyes moment there again. If only I was able to control the sound more expressively with aftertouch, I think I would uh, be in tears. Wow, the mod wheel does nice stuff here. I'm 
mean, do we need to go on? That's just awesome. But I do want to play you some of the very fun. These rhythmic ones are quite nice. <laughs> so we've got some really interesting layered drum grooves here. Did that one before, I think. And the drums have got some real kick to them, haven't they? Now we're into the... Now, um... I know some of you guys will be saying that this thing sounds a bit dated. I've read that on the internet forums as well. Yes, I would agree. Some of these presets do have a certain vibe from the late 90s, early 2000s, which I actually dig myself. It's quite a nice moment of nostalgia. But this doesn't have to sound this way. It doesn't have to be dated. I mean, it's the presets that sound dated. The architecture of the synthesizer, you could use it to create very modern, contemporary sounding presets if you wanted to. I'm a bit disappointed that Korg didn't demonstrate this by producing some new banks of sounds, perhaps even some more waveforms that you can use to make these sounds. They did it with the wave station and the M1, but it would have been very nice to see some new banks here showing exactly what this one can do in 2020. Because right now you're stuck with the presets that are 20 years old. A um, couple of other things, you can't load in your own presets from the original hardware either. Maybe good to know, but I'm just going to play so, I mean, let's go to back to the factory banks. Let's go to the last one here. See if we get some strange things. Normally, the most interesting and fun presets are the ones towards the end of the banks. Let's see what we've got. Uh, users slot? No. Just like this. Kind of sounds a bit Genesis to me, that one. So this is an example of a nice layer. We've got the drum groove going on as an arpeggio. I don't remember if I told you, but you can have uh, two arpeggios running in the combi mode. You assign them to whichever one of the programs you want. don't mind why don't we take a short break and we'll dive into the history of the Triton series of workstations. I think you'll find it interesting. I hope so anyway. Okay whilst we're here let's cross check some of the specifications. We have eight part multi timbrel, five effects, two multi effects, insert effects, multi effects. We have 4,000 ready to go programs, all of the expansion libraries, new sign browser. Yep let's carry on down. I want to get to the summary here. They've got a very nice write-up on the history of the Triton. 307 dual arpeggiator patterns. You'll hear some of those in action shortly. The easy mode we've taken a look at. If not, we will. Oh, the demo versions is quite nice. You can check this out for yourself. 
if I've sparked your curiosity. This is what we're looking for, the Triton story. Let's just scan through here very quickly together. So this all stems from the Trinity. Let's zoom in a little bit so everybody can see. The predecessor then was the Trinity, released in 1995. Okay. This was an amazing sounding device, I think. Look at this hard disk recording. This was pretty state of the art for the time. And this Moss tone generator, sadly not available in the Triton. Uh, this did some uh, physical modeling and virtual analog as well, but perhaps we'll see that in the future. Maybe that'll be a separate plugin from Korg. Uh, and it was an unaffordably high price tag in the Trinity. So they actually developed the Triton as a cheaper version of the Trinity, but it did eventually replace the Trinity. And in some ways it was a lot better as well. There's a nice shot of it there. The original Triton is now sometimes referred to as the Triton Classic came out in 1999 using the hyper integrated synthesis system hi for short the optional moss tone generator board strange name moss there you go with various dsp algorithms the signal routing was actually a step up from the trinity let's carry on down and yes you could sample on these as well that's not available in the plugin also had a built-in sequencer it was a full-on workstation that's not available in the plugin either the sequencer but who would want that since you're running it inside your daw which has its own sequencer which is far better and easier to use drum arpeggiators here's some guys this is the original release that's nice to see the release event the launch event for the triton it came in three models here's the rack as well came in 2000 and actually, I've done a bit of research here. The sound banks and the presets you get here are the same as the Triton rack. So that's what it seems to be modeled on most closely. There's a picture of the Triton LE, which dropped the touchscreen. The touchscreen was a pretty big deal at the time, by the way, and a more affordable model. 2001, that came. Had the same sequencer as well, though. There's a very arty shot there. The next one, the Triton Studio in 2002. You can see the touchscreen there as well. Maybe we can zoom in a bit. There you go. Look at that. Just a monochrome touchscreen. But that was pretty state of the art at the time. And it was unique, actually, for the Korg Triton. There was no other synthesizer, as far as I know, that had a touchscreen back then. So let's get out of here. And you can see also all the performance controllers that were available on here as well most of which are available on the plugin but you will need to map them up nice one there studio v2 came out in 2003 the strongest model in the series appears this is our triton extreme i think this was called now in black and with a you can just about see it a tube a sort of vacuum tube here built into the instrument this is something that korg is still doing today on some of their instruments there we go vacuum tube yeah triton le bk and there's some interesting derivatives that are sort of i mean this is the same sound engine more or less that they're still using today i think in some of their instruments like the cross the chrome obviously enhanced but it all comes from this and this is an evolution of the korg m1 as well which you know we like on the channel so that's another one there the TR 2005. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed that little history lesson on the Korg Triton.
hope you liked that and I've myself had a huge amount of fun playing this plugin. So much so in fact that I've been inspired to try out some Korg hardware, some of the newer hardware such as the Korg Cross, the Chrome and maybe one day even a Kronos. Do they sound as good as the Triton? Well there's only one way to find out. I've published a written article with my review of the Korg Triton VST over on my Patreon page. I've had a lot of fun actually writing written reviews for some of the gear I've featured on the channel, such as the Casio Piano and the Jupiter XM. I find you can get a lot more detail and thoughts when you do a written review compared to when you are just talking to the camera. I can get a lot more precise information and share exactly what I want to say. So if that's something you're interested in, and if you want more information about any of those synths or products, then please do consider signing up over on my Patreon page. It's a great way to support the channel and you'll get these, these uh, reviews plus lots of other interesting perks and rewards that I think you might enjoy. I'll take the opportunity to thank my supporters. Those are the people that you see at the beginning and the end of my videos. These are the guys that are donating to the channel via Patreon or by becoming a channel member. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It makes a huge amount of difference and it's not just about the money. It's more actually about some kind of confirmation of the value that I'm providing. If people are prepared to give something back, it means a lot to me. It gives me the motivation to carry on making these videos and a reason to do so. You see, a video like the one we've just watched actually took eight to 10 hours to plan, prepare, shoot. I had to do it a couple of times because I got it wrong the first time, edit, upload and all that. So it's an awful lot of time and effort, which I do enjoy. It really does mean a lot when you guys are prepared to support me and that gives me the motivation to keep on doing this. So thanks once again. So please do consider supporting your favourite creators, not just myself, but all the other guys whose content you enjoy. The way I do it, I have like a six or seven dollar budget every month and I send one dollar to each of my favourite creators. So I'm sharing a bit of the cake amongst everybody. And I know it's a really, really small amount, but every little bit really does help and make a difference. So there are links in the description for all of this stuff. If you want to read the review or learn a bit more about what I offer on Patreon, but that's enough for now. I need to go get a haircut. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Cheerio.